Hello, treasured friends. This is Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television. Dr. Terry Mason is Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health in Chicago, Illinois, USA. He is also Chief Urologist at Mercy Hospital in the same city and serves as an Assistant Professor in the Department of Urology at the University of Illinois. His dedicated, tireless contributions to society have won him many awards, including the Outstanding Young Doctor Award from Dollars and Cents Magazine, the Nigerian American Forum's Distinguished Persons Award, and the Monarch Awards Foundation Men in Medicine Award. In addition to his important work and responsibilities, Dr. Mason is actively involved in serving his community in his free time. He has hosted Doctor in the House, a health-oriented talk show on the Chicago radio station WVON for 15 years. Dr. Mason also leads the annual Restart or Meatless January campaign, which calls on Chicagoans to go completely meat-free during the first month of the year. At the beginning of 2009, on Doctor in the House, he pledged that he would not eat meat during January. He also told his listeners, I'm going to focus on eating a healthy and delicious variety of fresh vegetables and fresh fruit, and I want you to do the same. Dr. Mason's initiative is now in its fourth year. The program encourages everyone to stop unhealthy eating habits and to restart their systems by making smart food choices. Dr. Mason's five quick tips to restart are as follows. One, stop eating meat for one month. Two, drink plenty of water. Three, eat more vegetables than anything else. Four, eat fruits every day. And five, allow your food to be digested properly and be eliminated frequently. Delightfully, this year, Dr. Mason also decided to continue abstaining from meat even after January. One of our Supreme Master Television correspondents recently interviewed Dr. Mason about his campaign and recommendations for a lifestyle featuring healthy eating. We need to make everybody in America healthy. The simplest way I think is to create a system and an environment eating more of a plant-based diet. Americans are some of the biggest people, among the biggest people, but if you look at it in other parts of the world where people have basic diets that are more vegetable based, they're smaller people, they're, it doesn't mean they're less healthy, it means they're more, it can mean that they're more healthy. For example, if you look around the world, you see much lower incidences of certain kinds of diseases in persons that have a more plant-based uh, diet than in, in other areas. We spend twice as much money in so-called health care than most of the other industrialized countries in the world, yet we're 30th on one list and 46th on the other list in mm -hmm. life expectancy, there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And if we want to remove what I call the real health disparities, mm -hmm. that is move America up toward, the, up toward where Japan, for example, is, which is among and always on the list in the top three in terms of overall life expectancy, mm -hmm. We need to do some of the things that we see other people doing. If you look at these countries where you have people with higher life expectancies, many of those are people who have more plant-based diets than meat-based diets. Mm -hmm. I think that America has eaten itself into a problem mm -hmm. and it has to eat itself out of it, you know, and, and it's just that simple. It really, really is that simple and we have a wonderful opportunity to do that and we can get fruits and vegetables here. Eating is the key. Well, I would like you to comment on uh, the medical information and research studies that have compared a meat-based diet and a plant-based diet, and do you have any comments on that? Oh, there's, there's, there's a lot of information. The National Cancer Institute has on its website about heterocyclic amines. Heterocyclic amines, or HCAs, are those chemicals which have been defined as being known cancer-causing agents. Mm -hmm. Those cancer-causing agents are liberated when, when animal protein is cooked at a high temperature. So barbecuing, frying, broiling, grilling, a lot of those things keep cooked meats at these very, very high temperatures. And it releases these things. It even puts it, if you use the drippings from that, to make gravy. So. We're, we're, we're saying that there's a lot of evidence out there that says that we have some, some issues. We also know that heart disease, stroke, mm -hmm. and obesity, and diabetes are directly related to diet. Blood pressure and cholesterol levels are key indicators of health. 
we also know during a study called the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, mm -hmm. that people who eat at least eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day saw a decrease in their blood pressure. Mm -hmm. We also know that the problem with blood pressure in America is not just a matter of too much sodium, but it's too little potassium and too little uh, phosphorus. Those agents are found in all of our fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. The National Council on, um, on Cholesterol Education mm -hmm. Project talks about the first thing a doctor should do before putting you on medicine to lower your cholesterol is to give you a trial on what's called total lifestyle change. And the key component of lifestyle change is moving to a more plant-based way of eating because there is little to no cholesterol in most plant in most of the plant-based foods. Most all of the cholesterol that we eat that co creates a problem for us is in meat-based products. When we return, Dr. Mason will share more of his knowledge about plant-based foods and maintaining optimal health. You're watching Supreme Master Television. No one is not helped by drinking water. No one is not helped by fruits and vegetables. This is a universal message. Welcome back to Healthy Living, featuring Dr. Terry Mason, Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health and Chief Urologist at a prominent hospital in Chicago, USA. Since 2006, Dr. Mason has led the Restart Campaign, which calls on Chicagoans to adopt a natural and healthy meat-free diet during the month of January. Dr. Mason spoke about the primary ways to encourage people to make food choices that are best for their bodies. We know how to change behaviors. We, it's done every day, it's called marketing. Uh, there's an, a resolution by the American Medical Association where they want to ban all programming the children uh, under a certain age, particularly as it relates to food, because children are not little adults. They don't know how to make choices. And we know the science of colors. We know the science of fonts. We know the, the science of placement. We know all of these things. And, we need, and we've used those to, to create these markets. We can also use those same tools to retool America so that we can all become more healthy. In your opinion, uh, what should the government do to inform people on uh, health? Well, I think th they should have better, more programming about this. Children who are shown from the beginning how to eat correctly will maintain this beneficial habit throughout their lives. If we're really gonna be serious about trying to change our future, we need to make sure that we at least start with our children, which means a couple of things. Number one, parents need to cook. Yeah. Parents need to be certain that they know what their children are eating. Children come out with a pretty bland palate, mm -hmm. and they will adapt to what they've been, eat, they've been told or given to eat. Mm -hmm. So if we start them eating the right thing, we can continue doing that. At the federal level, we need to subsidize fruits and vegetables so that the school breakfast and lunch programs can buy with the money that they're given fruits and vegetables that have it served at the school. Mm -hmm. But it won't, be, it won't be as successful as it could be if the kids are not eating fruits and vegetables at home so they know to look for them when they come to school. If governments promote high vegetable and fruit consumption and make these foods inexpensive for purchase, the young will benefit tremendously. I'm saying make it cheap enough so that the schools can buy this because right now they don't get very much money to buy for the, these meals. Mm -hmm. And so they're given a list that the food has to be so many carbohydrates, so many, so many grams of fat and so many grams mm -hmm. of, of protein. And if that ends up being some sort of processed pizza puff, you know, that's what kids are getting. And all I'm saying is that we could provide our children with far more wholesome meals if we make fruits and vegetables cheap enough to be bought and then prepared in such a way that they make really good meals for our children. Access to fresh produce is fundamental to the well-being of all communities. Thus, governments at all levels must ensure a readily available and accessible supply of produce at reasonable prices to assure that the public health is safeguarded. 
We also have what are called food deserts in many of the communities where there's no opportunity for people to even buy fruits and vegetables. Mm. Mari Gallagher did a great study at looking at this and saw that there were over 300 years of potential life loss to either cancers or heart disease because of the proximity of people and the, 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 the propensity that people have for buying these foods out of these fast food places mm -hmm. versus going to grocery stores and getting foods and, and, and cooking them. And the foods I'm talking about primarily are those of the fruits and vegetables. Because when you go into, into the commun many communities, most of the food is fried, mm -hmm. most, of the, most of it is meat-based, or it's very he heavily carbohydrate-based. Well, do you think uh, government leaders should have a role? No question. We appreciate the time Dr. Mason took from his busy schedule to speak to us about the important topic of food choices in our everyday lives. May his message that fruits, vegetables, and pure water are keys to well-being reach all of Chicago, USA, and beyond. Thank you viewers for your kind company on today's episode of Healthy Living. Please stay tuned for science and spirituality coming up next after noteworthy news. May the light of heaven shine upon you.